What's up YouTube fans? Today I'm going to be reviewing the DX9's Richtofen, their version of Power Glide. Um, I don't even know how to really say this. <laughs> I think it's Richtofen or I don't know how to speak German or whatever <laughs> language that is. Um, I believe that was the name for the Red Baron. Um, flow the like biplane or triplane, whatever it was. Um, but here he is. Um, it's actually a really kind of cool box. It's got like American stars and stripes on it, sort of. Um, so it's kind of neat. Uh, it's got the full name here, Digital x 9 or D DX9 Toys. T11. On the back you've got some blueprint drawings of the figure itself. Uh, nothing much on the box. H15 Plus and some warning. Don't eat anything. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't know what this is. It says Freeman. I don't know if that's a group that does their instructions or their, you know, videos or what. But maybe it's their photo photography. They've got, you know, a credit there. Um, and it's, it's a very, like, interesting feeling box. It's kind of like this glossy plastic. So it's interesting. It's a nice box. It's, it's cool to see them doing it, and I already bent the top here. There wasn't much, really a way to open it without doing that, but... So, here is the figure. And we'll just get the box out of here. And here's what comes in the tray. You've got the trading card. It looks very much like a... Uh, Takara Masterpiece card, so I like that. And the instructions also look like Takara Masterpiece instructions, so that's pretty cool. This guy, will come, he does come wrapped in his cell phone. Oops. Everything fell out. Um, here's a stand. It says DX9 on it. That's pretty cool. All the pieces you gotta put, you kinda gotta put it together. We'll get the trays out of here. And here you have the figure and his kind of cellophane wrapper. Just to keep him protected because I know he's painted. Or he's got some painted parts. And uh, here he is. I think he needs a little bit of transforming here. Seems a little off. Or I'm mistaken, I don't know. Yeah, the foot definitely seems off there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be like that. So let's see if we can fix that. Just rotate. Huh. Everything's really, really tight here. Like, extremely tight. Yeah, this is definitely off. It's supposed to be straight, so... Oh yeah, okay. It's just really tight. Um, but he does... It, it's got a peg down here. So you can kind of straighten it up. And then get that peg in. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. Maybe they purposely shipped it that way. I don't know. But because it's not straight, it just doesn't go in. So you gotta straighten it up and then you can get it in there. There we go. Alright, well, now that we fixed that, um, it doesn't seem to have a. Uh, Rotation at the angle. He can rotate his feet. There you go. And it feels really cool. Like there's, there's, I think there's die cast here. Maybe it's just the paint, but it feels like there's a bunch of die cast on this guy. Chest, maybe. Some of the arms. Pieces on the arms are die cast too. So it, it just feels nice and hefty. All of the joints are like super tight. It's really hard to turn actually. Um, which is nice. Maybe they tightened it up for uh, the final spec here. Um, but all in all it looks really, really cool. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the way this, this guy turned out. Yeah, this, this thing kind of throws me off here. The foot. They probably could have just had this foot. But you gotta do something with the rear wing. So it becomes covers for the feet and it just looks kind of funky. 
And, and also, you're expecting the foot to turn this way, and it doesn't. It just, it'll rotate like this, and it'll go up and down like that. So you can get, you know, whatever pose you want. You just gotta turn the knees. You can get a pretty wide stance here if you need to. And definitely really, really tight joints. They must have had some feedback that it wasn't tight. So they put it uh, pretty crazy tight. Wow, this guy is really quite nicely articulated here. I definitely am not good at posing on camera, and, and this guy seems like he's pretty easy to pose. I already got him in a pretty good pose here. Uh, so he does come with the... Uh, let's fix his feet. He does come with a gun, and it looks very similar to the Masterpiece Bumblebee gun. Actually, let's get that out and take a look at that. So guys, um, it wasn't Masterpiece Bumblebee, actually. Mobile gun is familiar too, but it's very similar to the Masterpiece uh, Ironhide gun. So here's the Ironhide gun, here's the Ironhide gun, here's the Richtofen, and you can see just the shape overall kind of thing. It's similar, it's not exactly the same. But but I like the gun a lot, I like the, the shape and the, and the paint on it. Um, by the way, this guy is really awesome, this is a great transformer. I haven't transformed him in a while. So, take a look at his gun. Let's see how it fits in his hand. Now, his hand does open and close. So you can, let's see, you can slide it in. You can close this. Oh, actually, look at that. He's got a pointer finger individually articulated. There was definitely no need for that. <laughs> I didn't need to articulate the, the finger, but they did. So it looks like he's got a trigger finger, which is really awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Now here's this little girl that loved uh, Power Glide. That's pretty neat. Uh, you also have this mask here for that one episode where they went to Hollywood. Uh, I believe you have to turn the face around. And I don't know how to do that yet, so we'll have to look at the uh, instructions. I thought you just, oh yeah, you just turn it. And you get blank face here. But that exposes a uh, little knot or a slot, which this has a tab that goes right in there. And you can get this in. Oops. Oh, it's kind of hard to get in there because the face rotates while you're doing it. So you got to have it straight on. It almost feels like you're going to break it. So you just got to be careful. Sometimes I don't think these things are worth it. You know, I, I'd rather not pay the extra for the stupid mask. You know, and just make the figure a couple dollars less. I'd rather... Because it depends. You know, how good is this accessory? It's alright, you know. But, but I don't care for this mask. I'm never going to use it. It's not coming out of the box, so let's get rid of that thing. And put back his face. Hopefully this doesn't scratch his face. It doesn't look like it does. I would be worried about that over time, but it doesn't seem to have caused an issue in that particular instance. So yeah, I mean, some really good features here on this. Really tight head too. <laughs> Everything is tight. Nothing is, uh, nothing is loose at all. There you go. Man, I'm really bad at posing on camera here, so excuse my delays, but really, it really looks good. So as far as paint, I believe there's some paint here. Oh yeah, and the chest opens up. Kind of tough to get to. Um, he does have some paint flaking. You can see down here, some red paint. And that's not awesome. And I don't, I don't like when paint chips. Some of them might be from this chest. Uh, but in terms of paint, you know, it is painted here, here, on the front chest here. 
I believe these are painted. There's some red plastic too. You can kind of see the color differences there. Um, this back piece here, which... Yeah, and then the silver. There's like a pearlescent white on the shoulders and then a silver on the arms here. So it's a good mix of uh, paint and colors. I think they did a really good job with the paint on this guy. That's what makes it kind of a masterpiece. It's like the extra touch of care, paint, you know, really trying to get it to be that G1 likeness. That's what uh, sets this apart from a traditional... Uh, I think we've only gotten one Power Glide in the past, right? This is, this is the only second one I think we've ever had in terms of masterpiece scale or, uh, you know, bigger than the chug scale. So I, I kind of like this. I am a little disappointed about the paint uh, chipping Same. part. By the way, the instructions are, are not bad. Um, there isn't really anything about robot mode and extra features. So if you didn't know that this opened, you know, there's no pictures of it anywhere in the entire manual or on the box. So if you didn't watch a review video to know that that opens, you probably never would have found it because it's not in the book. And it's not obvious and it's painted shut. So... <laughs> You probably wouldn't try it. Now, I actually pried it open with a screwdriver. I took off a little bit of paint on the edge here. That's how I know it's painted. And you can kind of see that. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Looking, getting close. Yeah, you can see I chipped a little bit of paint off. So definitely not worth chipping the paint off. Um, the problem is they painted it inside. So, once you close it, it's really hard to open, and it's almost not really worth opening, but I think you kind of have to if you want to get the landing gear out, I believe. Let's see, this is the landing gear. Oh, it's really goddamn tight. I don't even know if it's going to open. Oh my gosh. That is super tight. Alright, got that out. So I guess you're going to have to open this. So maybe it's fine. Maybe I needed to open it anyways. But I just don't like that. I don't like that it. I had to chip the paint to get it open. They really should have been a little more careful about how much paint they applied. And you could probably see if we can fix this a little bit. Yeah, you can see down here is like a little bit of extra paint and stuff. So you could probably shave it down to get it to fit and it would be a little better. Or you could shave here maybe. But I mean, there's a little bit of this plastic stress there too. So. I don't know. I really don't like that. But it is cool inside. There's some nice detail in there. You got some nice paint. And by the way, the face plate is, is well painted. It's a really good face sculpt for, uh, for uh, Power Glide here. They really did a nice job on this guy. This is, uh, you know, I, I can't remember. I don't think I've had any DX9 figures. I, I was going to get Carrie, but it was just a little bit too Studio Ox for me, and I was looking for more of a G1 style, and I didn't really like the original. So, so far, I don't have a um, Masterpiece Rodimus Prime. But this guy is, I think, a little bit more G1 accurate. You know, a little more looks like... It really looks like this guy came out of the cartoon, straight out of the cartoon. Uh, we'll put a picture, an image of uh, G1 Power Glide up here in the corner. Um, but I think they did a great job trying to get that G1 likeness. Considering the paint, you also have a little bit here on the crotch, which I believe you'll see in uh, plain mode, but it is part of the robot mode. The face is painted, you got the little crest here is painted. Uh, the gun, some details here on the side of the arms, which is pretty cool. I like that. Um, the legs have that silver paint and then pearlescent paint as well. The engines, which we'll see in uh, vehicle mode, although they look pretty cool already. So really a lot of nice detail. I'm wondering if this is painted because if it's on the bottom, will it scratch eventually and wear down? I don't know. Also, is there a way to just get this out of the way? <laughs> Maybe you can have it like that. So this is a display option. You can have it like that. And you actually get quite a bit of range like that. 
So, I don't know. You could have it like that if you wanted to. It'd probably look better in a straight pose. But I know they, they intended for you to transform it and attach it like that. So, you got some options. You know, it's always good to have options with uh, transformation. And I'm not a huge fan of the fact that you can't rotate the foot. You gotta rotate the leg. But, it's okay. Oh, I guess you can rotate the leg and the knee. Uh, let's go over uh, articulation real quick. So you've got the head is on a swivel and a rotation. Yeah, swivel and a slight rotation joint there so you can get a little bit up and down. Not a whole lot. Um, the shoulders are really tight, so you kind of want to hold this, you know, the tab that holds the wing in before you rotate, so you're not, uh, I don't even know if that's a good idea, maybe you should hold the wing, hold the wings, and then rotate, because this thing is, like, super tight. Uh, so you got a nice full 360 rotation there, you do have the shoulder, um, pads, which kind of rotate up, so you can get the arm all the way up to there. Really, really good engineering there. You can get this thing all the way up if you need to. Um, you do have a bicep swivel. You've got a double jointed elbow to get the full rotation there. Uh, you do get a rotation at the hand. And then what really amazed me was the hand is articulated and the pointer finger is articulated, which didn't need to be. I'm not even sure why they did that. But pretty cool that they did that. I'm probably going to be keep holding on to this figure. I can kind of already tell it's really high quality. Um, hopefully DX9 keeps making stuff like this because uh, this, is, this is pretty cool. It is my first DX9. Uh, going back down to the bottom here, um, you do have a waist swivel. goes all the way around. It's not hindered. Uh, you have hip skirts, hips, hip skirts all the way around. They're really tight. Um, you could probably... Oh, shh. So, oh, I scratched a little paint off there. I don't like that. Uh, but you can't hope to, they're really tight, all of these hip skirts. But once you get them all up, oh, there's one in the back too. Wow! You really just want all out with this guy. You got every possible thing you can want here. A fully articulated, fully transformable, fully posable. Uh, you do get the full, yeah. Full back and forth, all the way out. So full splits, full Van Damme. Um, these are a little hard to move, but but they do move, which is impressive. You know, on such a small figure, they, they really included everything. Uh, you get a rotation at the thigh. You also get a rotation at the knee. You get the 90 degree bend, pretty much exactly 90 degrees. Uh, you do get the ankle pi uh, pivot and ankle tilt back and forth. Uh, you can't turn the foot, but you can turn the whole bottom of the leg, so that should serve its purpose. Um, but that's plenty of tilt, you know, to get a pretty wide stance if you need it. Let's see. So that's about as wide as you can get it. Which is not bad. Uh, you also have this piece that folds out here that makes the ankle, or it makes a heel spur. So it gives it a little bit of added flex, um, stability so it doesn't fall backwards. So all in all, a very, very nice design. I'm really impressed by this guy. Oh, by the way, also in the package you get this with the instruction booklet. Uh, it's like a little poster of uh, Rectofen. It's actually really cool. It's a really cool artwork. And it's an extra, they didn't need to include this, but it's just a, kind of a neat thing um, that they have that. All right guys, let's do a couple of size comparisons here, um, just so you can get a sense of the scale here. So here he is with Masterpiece Bumblebee. Uh, I'll try to get all the mini bots in, that I have at least. Um, and uh, with him, he does look kind of the right scale. I don't know if I can find a picture of these two together. If I can, I'll put it up in the corner. Um, here he is, and I'll probably find a better picture of these two together, but here he is with uh, the Toy World's uh, 
he spray? I'm trying to remember his name. I forget what they called him. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, these guys are like perfectly in scale. Yeah, they really look good together. And if I just stand them up straight, probably be just about the same height. So I like that scale. I think that's that makes a lot of sense. Um, Bumblebee is really tiny, but I mean he was tiny to begin with, even <laughs> for his masterpiece scale. And here is Optimus Prime because you gotta have Optimus Prime. Uh, this guy comes right about to his chest, so that seems about right. You know, that's a good scale. So all in all, a uh, pretty good scale here for Masterpiece uh, Power Glide from DX9. So we're going to get this guy transformed into vehicle mode, and we'll do a few more comparisons, and we'll be right back. Alright guys, we're back from transforming. Um, just in case you don't watch my channel regularly, uh, I will do a separate transformation video. I don't uh, tend to transform during my review video because um, I just think it lengthens the review video and makes it uh, harder for people to watch it. So if you need that video, you can watch my transformation separately. But here he is. Um, it is really good looking. Um, but there are a few issues here in vehicle mode. I'm going to talk about those. Um, it is a, is a great looking vehicle. Uh, the paint, you know, now I understand why they painted the parts they painted because it just makes it pop a little bit more. Um, what I really love, one of the things I think is the coolest thing is, is these engines. You know, they painted this silver and then they took the time to put in the detail in there and back here. You know, they painted this. Those little pieces in there were not needed. They didn't have to do that, but they needed that detail. I don't know if you can see in there. That detail is really good. Like I, I love that they took the time to do that. Um, I do like the little nose cone here. Uh, the clear cockpit is fine because there's nothing to see inside, so it's not distracting in any way. Uh, but there are a couple issues here. So number one. These landing gear do not come out. They're they're really hard. Um, unless you want to break something, you know. I did try a couple times and I made a couple scratches. I mean, this one you can kind of see the scratches. I tried. I tried to get those out, and it's definitely going to break. This one I did get out, um, but it just separated from its mounting point. You know, so, yeah, there you go. So it just falls right out. So these aren't the greatest. I I don't know why. They chose to do it this way. They probably could have made a better design, but as design, it just doesn't work. It, it kind of just falls out or, or doesn't come out at all. This one I can't even get out without probably breaking the figure. Um, but there are two other landing gear. You got this one in front, this in the back. And it does sort of stand, you know, it, it kind of balances on these. Um, but you do have another option here. So that's, that's one problem is these landing gear don't come out. The other problem is um, the paint is sort of chipping and scuffing kind of all over, like right here, and a little bit scuffing and chipping. Hopefully you can see that right there. And that's kind of unfortunate that, you know, they made it that tight that it has to do that. Um, but one thing you can do is flip this around, flip this around, and by the way, these do tab in right here, but um, you can flip those around and just kind of leave them on that side. Don't really push it hard because it's going to leave a paint mark. Um, but then you can have it like that, and I actually think that looks a little better with the with the blocky parts on the inside rather than the, on the outside. So you have a little bit of options here with the display. Um, these engines can also move up, but that's stupid. I don't know why you would want to do that. They do look better on the out, and you also have a, a little stress mark here. That's another issue. A little stress mark right there. You know, I didn't I didn't do anything to to create that stress mark. That's just the way it was when I transformed it so you know it shouldn't be stressing already just started playing with this figure but all in all a really a really beautiful figure now you do have the flight stand here um you can pose this you kind of have to take it apart and put it back together and it's kind of tough to do i mean really you sort of have to put some muscle into it but 
the end product looks great. You know, I, I like the way they... This is a nice little display stand. And again, they didn't need to include this, but it definitely helps, you know, add value to this figure. Um, by the way, this is, it says DX9 down here in the bottom of the uh, display stand. And it's a good size, you know, it's not too big, not too small. Uh, most of the plane is, is colored right. There's a little bit of stuff going on here, but it really doesn't detract. And I do like uh, putting these little blocky parts on the inside. Um, this was a nice touch too, you know. They made use of the uh, shoulder pads and those become engines. It's, it's such an ingenious design, you know. They could have just left it like this. In a flat, kind of boring plane, but this really is a nice design. It's a nice touch to make those engines come out like that. You know, it really looks like the engine or the pontoons or whatever it is. Um, I just love the way they did that. It, it really adds to the design. One thing that it wasn't great here is that on the wing, these little folding pieces, one of them just kind of fell off. So again, the joints for those aren't great. I kind of want to be careful and just be gentle with it. So you can take the little tab right here, it sticks up. And again, you're trying to get it into the head which rotates, so you kind of have to be, you know, pretty, uh, you gotta need have some finesse there. But you can get it in, and it does look good. So overall, I, I really do like this guy. I'm definitely keeping him in my connect collection. I think he. Makes a good mini bot. Let's bring in some other mini bots for comparison. Hey right, guys, here we have a comparison with the Toy World uh, Sea Spray, and obviously Sea Spray is really big, um, but they still kind of go together. You know, I I don't know why I really like this Toy World Sea Spray. I'm I'm hoping the X Transbots one comes out and maybe blows this out of the water. But this really is a fun figure to transform back and forth and. It's just got a lot of cool features, like the die cast up here, and the die cast here, and the guns. It's just it's got a lot of playability. But anyway, back to this DX9. Um, I think it fits in well with the minibots. You know, they're kind of good sizes together. Makes some sense. Uh, by the way, we never weighed this guy. Let's get a weight on him. So he comes in at four and a quarter ounces, so definitely a light guy compared to some of these others. This is about six and a half ounces. So he is a small little guy, but he's pretty dense because um, he's got a lot of die cast on him. Uh, so all in all, I'm pretty happy with this guy. I'll probably keep him. Uh, I just wish he didn't have some of the cheap parts to him, like... Uh, especially the uh, landing gear. You know, landing gear really just don't work. They don't they don't come out properly. And if you do take them out, you're probably going to break them. And that should not be the case for you know a seventy dollar figure like this. Now I I got it on eBay. I paid sixty five, I believe, uh, from Baba Bobo. You know my my retailer on, on eBay, and uh, I would say it's, you know, pretty worth, it's probably worth like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, but where you're paying extra is the articulation and the detail, some of the paint, you know, they did, they did go a little above and beyond with this figure, especially some of the detailing and some of the articulation, some of these extra features, um, does, does increase the, the, the value of this guy. And the playability of this guy, and I think I think they did a good job for one of their mini bot figures. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.